as a kid, I knew a lot more than I should know. Just to hear people. The, the lobby, all the women, when the men got groceries on Saturday, the men and women came in to get the groceries, and he would take care of his business at the hardware store. Then the guys would go, they talk weather. It was not always just drinking. They would go over and talk the weather and visit in the bar, and the women would wait in the lobby. I loved it. I loved old lady, and now I am one. I just loved them. And they would, you know, uh, sit around and visit, and, well, you know, that's good for a kid, too. It's fun to hear all this. And I remember, I can remember I was about, I couldn't have been four, three or four years old. I can remember it like it's yesterday. All those women, I had a bottle of fingernail polish. And I said, would not I love to polish somebody's nails? And I talked to everybody. And they all wore hats in those days. You know, nobody would let me polish their nails, except my grandmother. And she had lived mostly in Seattle after I was born. But isn't that kind of a cute thing that I cannot remember that grandmother at all? In any way, I don't remember where her room was, remember anything. But she let me, and I looked at her nails, and they almost looked like mine, kind of pretty good-sized nails. And I was so tickled. And I think that's a fun memory. She never, nobody wanted me to because I was only three and a half or four, but gosh, I was going to do a really nice job, and it must have been a mess. But she let me do that, and I thought, otherwise I would never really remember that I had a grandmother, but I remember her being nice enough to let me polish her fingernails. So was that and your... My, my dad's mother. Down, and she's the okay. one that started the hotel. She, after her husband died in 1900, he was buried in 1900, she went to Minneapolis and took the two kids and had money enough to buy a lot, and they just started this. So the railroad must have taken pretty good care of her. They paid her to do all of this, and uh, they went there for a bit. Uh, they didn't even finish uh, a year, I don't think, and Dad hated it, and she came back. To Hinsdale, of all things, yeah, you know, you'd think this would be the last place you'd want to be. And she built the, we called it Oswald Wauber House, but it's the one that they tore down there. It was kind of behind the post office. Hmm. And that garage is still there, that old stucco garage. But that she built that and started a uh, boarding house again. She had one there again. And then she bought, got back into the hotel business. What was the story I wanted to tell about? Buying the... Uh, from Jurgensen for 10 cents? Yeah, she, for 25 cents she bought that. But uh, another thing that was kind of a cute story. I'm trying to think about that. Different. She went to town that day. Yeah, she bought it for 25 cents. But there were other, there was something else that was kind of a cute story. The things flip your mind, slip your mind. What? And... Uh, yeah, I was always laughing about Peggy Rudder. i got to get back at Peggy Rudder. <laughs> she always talked about beating up Monty Denham. That was my brother, you know. And I said, I know that she beat up Monty Denham one time, but every time I turned it on, she beat Monty Denham up again. And I said, now i got to get back at her. <laughs> she might have got him one time. But uh, she was just old enough that she had a really good judgment of how to do things. Well, it was a problem for Joanna and I because we still like to do a lot of... Well, I remember we liked to try, we tried to fry eggs on the sidewalk, and there was a lot of things that we had to do all the time, trying a lot of different things, and Peggy had better judgment, and it was kind of hard sometimes <laughs> to try to get away from her so we could go do the things we wanted to do. Oh, and then we took, I know, horses, but that was my dad's thing. He just loved horses, and when his mother was busy, and he was just little, and she'd lost her husband, she would put him on a horse It was grazing out in the back, and he couldn't get down. And that's, he babies her, and he said, I twisted that mane, and I pinched him, and I kicked him. Nope. He'd just keep right on eating, and he was stuck there till she didn't have time to watch him. She was cooking. And uh, he was such a horseman, such a rider. My husband would say, I'd never seen anything like it. He didn't know. He just rode right along with that. He was unbelievable the way he could ride. Just, he was in a lot of rodeos and stuff as a kid. We have a lot of those programs around here from rodeos. He was in every, everything. He rode. Once he said it was 
big deal, like Fourth of July, and a, a uh, airplane came to town, and they give him rides. And he got on, and he ride out in front somehow. You were the one. You rode out in front. He said, "I always wanted to die bulldogging from that airplane." He was want that guy to go down. And when he came out to see me in New York once, he was so nervous to get on that airplane. And I said, good God, and he would get on that thing right out in the front of that airplane. He wants somebody to take him down so he could bulldog <laughs> off of an airplane. And, uh, well, they had a saddle club, and he was always in charge of the saddle club. And we were, we had a horse. It was part shuttling, part of the problem. And they are uh, not gentle ride. They were just, you just bounce along on that thing. And Joanne was there again, and we were going to ride to Glasgow, halfway to Glasgow. They're having a big to do, a big picnic, family uh, picnic, everybody in this club. So I rode Rex. And Joe and I were having a lot of fun, but you try to stand up best you can, you know, a good rider. But mine was a lot of bouncing, and I did bounce all the way to Glasgow, and that, or where we went 15 miles. So and, all kind of by Buggy Creek then? or Yeah, we must have gone out. I can't exactly tell you where. But we ever, the Glasgow came to meet us, and we had this big deal and go back. So my dad said, are you all right, Peggy? I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to go. I was 10 or 11 years old. We had our barn was right across the tracks there. And we got back, and he's out getting, he's taking his stuff apart. He had a real pretty horse. He said, come on, Peggy. Get off. Come on, let's go. And I said, I can't. And he said, no, come on, get off. I, I said, Dad, I can't. He said, what do you mean? I said, I can't get off of the horse. That 30 miles, that bit me in. And he got, he come over and he kind of cussing and mad and he got me down and I just went down on the ground. He had to carry me to the car. He said, my God, why didn't you say something to me? And I said, you think I was going to quit in the middle of this thing with Joanne? You know, she's riding along just fine. Mine was a boy, that little gentleman. He just bounced that whole way. I went 30 miles that day. And my mother said, what's the matter? And Dad said, well, I don't know what's the matter with her. She didn't say a thing. I'd, you know, I didn't remember that yet. And that probably took me a couple of weeks to get over that one. But uh, we rode a lot, and we could always ride, but I was never a rider. I was kind of a fat little punk, you know. And I couldn't get on either without uh, awful. I had to get up on a rock or something to get on. <laughs> I wanted my brother to jump on. He was this little half Indian, I think. And so I, one day I thought, I'm going to get on this horse. I'm tired of everybody laughing at me. And so I'd get, throw my leg, and I could get just halfway. And the horse turned around and grabbed me by behind and pull me off. <laughs> I never could. He wouldn't let me get it. I suppose does it hurt him? I don't know, but I get his mane, you know, and pull like crazy to try to get up. And we had a horse in our backyard at the hotel. Dad, he'd keep it out at Gosh's, Katie's dad, Dan Gosh, and uh, I called him Gone Dash. <laughs> I was little, I could never remember his name. And we'd go out and get the uh, horse and stuff out there. It was the nicest place. And they had a stream. You could drive into that stream and my dad would wash his car. It was all rock and Are nice. And uh, uh, they had a, uh, she had a underground, you know, have you ever seen that where the guys put the uh, their milk in the water and stuff? He had a spring, like a spring house. And that was so much fun to go out there and see all that. And we'd We'd sit on that. Uh, Dad would drive the car in there, and he was, he would always, whatever he did, he'd put everything into it. His pants rolled up, and he was washing the car, and I was helping him on the other side. And I splashed different things, or right, and it's so funny. I thought, oh, so I found a rock, and I wrote Peggy across the, from one end to the other. And then I was going to just wash it off. And my dad came around, and it was a green fort, I remember it. 39 Ford or he said, Peggy, did you do that? And I said, well, what's the matter? Did I spell it wrong? I was probably just in first grade. I thought I spelled my name wrong. And he said, he sold that out, that uh, card of Mr. Brown that lived out where Lloyd is now. They had a big garden and everything. You know, I can't think of his name, but Mr. Brown. And that said, it said Peggy. <laughs> the rest of the time, it said Peggy. I scratched it in, with a rock. Oh, my God. They didn't do anything to me, but he was shocked, 
you know, and I and I just absolutely had no idea that they wouldn't just take a hose and wash it off. Because he had used soap and... He was washing one other side and cleaning it, and I was just washing on the other side, thinking I was helping. But she got to thinking about something else, and then I thought, well, I'll write my name. And it's, we're standing in rock, you know, there, and so I just got in rock and wrote it big. <laughs> I said, I often wonder whatever happened to that car. I'd have bought it, I guess. <laughs> and that was funny. And then one day, Mary and I were together, she lived in the hotel at the time her mother ran the restaurant. So people would leave their cars on. Doesn't that sound funny? They could take the keys, but your car would be on. And nobody kept keys in their car. Uh, mostly, I always just left them on. You didn't worry about losing your key because you just only got it when you sold it, I guess. All the cars were pretty much on. But if they were off, you could sit and hold the starter down and put it in gear, you know, and it would blah, 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 and it would back up, and then we'd roll down and hit the curb again. And Sundays, you know, well, your dad would have a fit, he'd find you, but everybody was usually rest, uh, resting. So one day, Mary and I were doing it, and Marietta and I, and so we went, uh, Clinton Kreitz was dad's bartender, and he had a terraplane. Have you ever heard of a terraplane? It's a big black car. Don't know if it was a terraplane. And she got in this thing, she's a little short girl. We weren't very old, nine or ten. And she pushed this button. My God, the car started. And she pulls her into gear and she backed up. And we backed away from the curb and did a complete circle and hit the back on the sidewalk, on the back end. And I'm, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even talk, I was so shocked. And she been with her grandfather and lived out, out there with them and he'd let her drive an old Model T. She'd kind of done it but she wasn't very big and she, I didn't even know really how you do it. she pulled that sucker into gear and we started down the street. We headed for the, the, light, the, the flagpole and she said, oh, I, I was excited, it is exciting, you know, there was nothing going on a Sunday afternoon again, it's real quiet, and she said, Peggy, what'll I do? Should I go around the flagpole, or which side should I go on? And she cut it, I said, go on this side. So we went the wrong side, you know, went turned by the bank there. Meantime, we'd run into Mr. Hillman, the banker was coming, and I remember his head, he looked over, but he didn't know who it was, we were both short. Isn't that awful? And we went down then to the uh, baseball field, and I said, oh, we got to get this thing back. Well, when we got back to the post office, I thought she said, well, oh, no, i got to practice, she said, before I pull in again. I'm not sure how. Now, we're not going 20 miles an hour, 15 maybe, you know, and we went way out north, and all the approaches were muddy. And said, oh, my God, what are we going to do, you know, and I'm the worried it's the devil because I don't want them to find out I'm there. So I said, I'll get out. I decided that point quite big ditches. I said, I'll get out and I'll tell you whether to when to stop and start. So she just worked we worked and worked and worked. We got that car turned around, go back home. And then I'm still wondering why we didn't just park it down by the Catholic Church and go down to the river or something and come up the other way and have nothing to do with it. But no. We just figured, no, we know we're gone. And we come from the post office. When I turned around the corner, oh my God, there was the sheriff. All, anything they could get. They didn't know what to do. Somebody stole Clinton Kreitz's car. And my dad was there, who was the, probably the worst one you want there. And my mother and Marietta's, uh, Marietta's mother, and she was kind of romancing this, the bartender, Clinton, so that Mary had been in that car a lot. It was kind of like a stepfather. And anyway, the kid, she had a lot of guts. She turned around and she just stopped right there in front of all of them, all those people were waiting. And we got out. Well, I didn't need to get out. The door opened on my side and my dad got me. And the way I went, and I didn't get out of my room for a week. He was so bad. I said, but I didn't know she was going to drive it. I didn't know, but that wasn't no didn't come get me out of it, you know. He was mad at me. And I said, but Dad, I didn't know. But then he, he cussed a couple times. He said, who do you think was going to pay for it if you wrecked it? He knew he, 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 Clint was working for him. He didn't have any money. Marietta's mother wasn't going to pay for it. 
I would, he was going to pay for it, and he didn't forgive me. My mother would say, now, Morris, Morris, don't do it, don't, you know, don't hurt her. He, she, my mother was about afraid he was going to kill me. But it was fun. I still remember how much fun it was, but it wasn't any fun. And, you know, we could have got away with it, just leave it down by the Methodist Church and go, you know, we kids could leave in the morning. You could leave in the morning and come home at supper time. Just go down to the river. Usually Stubbs Rudder, Joanne's dad, was a good swimmer. And he saved my life down there. He, 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 you could go swimming if Stubbs were around. But all the kids in town were down there. Marietta pulled me backward once and nearly drowned me, but I was still talking to her. But we, uh, it, that was the one that really took care of everybody down at the river, swimming at the river. They were talking, my dad was a kiddie. They used to, uh, the story we were just talking about, they, the boys together liked to ride the horses, and dad was a good rider just as a kid. And one of the boys, the farm boys, came in, he had his horse. And they were fooling around, riding, see if they could ride across the river on this horse. Well, this horse didn't particularly like to go in the water. He hated it. And he started bucking and raising a lot of fuss. And so then the trip was to see, could anybody stay on this horse? And Dad said, I was able to stay on the horse. I was the only one that could, but the horse drowned. And he said, the other kid said, Oh, was he scared to go home? Because he, he left. He had, I suppose his dad would know that the horse would drown. The boy didn't think that the horse was going to drown, but he didn't like water, you know, evidently. And but the, he was afraid of so much fun. They much cane. They wanted to see who could ride it like a rodeo, you know. And his dad said he was able to stay on the horse, but the horse didn't make it. It's kind of a spooky story, huh? Is that too spooky for yeah. <laughs> for the general public? <laughs> Guess that horse had a reason for not wanting to go. Evidently, he couldn't oh, swim. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Do you suppose he wasn't swimming? I suppose the water wasn't very deep. I've seen it when there's hardly any mm -hmm. water in that river. Have you ever seen it dry up? Yes, I did. I came home one time. And I've been gone. I came back. We could rock across the river. There wasn't one bit of water there. There's <laughs> a lot of flooding. There was always a lot of flooding. We had it. When we were out at the ranch, and that was the year we graduated, and they had a dinner for us. And that my mother would not come down that ladder and get on that boat. Those guys fix something up. <laughs> they were bringing people across, and my dad said he knew when she said no. That that was it. She was there was Francine's telling me about it, and she was expecting Dean, and she climbed on that ladder and went to the hospital. My mother wasn't about to do it. She looked and she just said no.